Hello, I'm retired Battalion Chief Larry Cockman, Chairman of the Greensboro Fire Department History Book Committee. The American Fire Service is rich in tradition and culture. A firefighter's life is filled with many emotional highs and lows, stories of major fires, national disasters, medical calls, firehouse living, and family life are often verbally shared from one generation to another. Many times these stories are lost forever when a firefighter passes away. In an effort to preserve these stories, in 2019, the Greensboro Fire Department History Book Committee launched a new program of recording audio video of our retirees' lives. These stories will be shared on our website, gfhbc.org. In 2020, we did not record because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please listen as these firefighters share their life experiences with all of us. My name is Bryce Green. I started in 1967 and I retired in 2005 at the rank of captain. Well, I'm from uh, originally Roxborough, uh, but I've been here for approximately 60 years, so. <laughs> what was I doing when I first come on the department? I was working for Western Electric Company and they were in the process of laying me off. So I started looking for a job and I applied for the fire department and I applied for the police department. One called me one day and the other one called me the next day. And I wanted at first to go to the police department, but my wife said, no, 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 that's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. But what she didn't know, that I, when I chose the fire department, that more firefighters get killed than they do policemen. So that's how I went to the fire department. The process when I was hired, uh, you put in an application at the old uh, Station 1 up here on, I guess it's Elm Street now. Oh, it will then too. And then they call you. Uh, they call me probably three weeks later. And back then, you went to the fire station. When I was hired, they sent me to the fire station before I went to the train. And I was at the station probably six months before I went to the uh, training. And I went in training. And um, for by back then, it was like six or eight weeks, which was hard labor. <laughs> and, uh, and I past training, so I was fully firefighter. My starting salary was $400 a month. Yes, I remember a few that was in my class. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think, Bucky Marsh was one, Levi Loken was one. Um, was there any funny stories in training? I don't think so, cause okay. my training days were all about business. <laughs> Just prior to my training class, they fired about eight or nine, so I was concentrating on passing training and getting out of there. I, I, after I got in there, I really enjoyed it, and, uh, and I would have done it over again if I had to. My first station assignment was Station 4. When I, uh, who was my captain? So when I first started, it was uh, down at Station 4 and it was before they integrated. So they had leaders, they didn't have captains. And it was all, so this guy named was Cardwell was my leader. But my first captain, once I left 4, I went to 9 and it was uh, Jack Nugent. Now, that was my first captain. Thanks. The only nickname I had, I had a couple of guys used to call me Green Man. Observed or? <laughs> Did I observe any firehouse pranks? Absolutely. Um, they had, I don't think it happened to me, but you know, we had our boots sitting on the side of the truck. When we got a call, we'd go jump in our boots. 
they pour water in your boots, <coughs> and that and, and did it in the winter time, <laughs> and then they um, would short seat short sheet you, and if people don't know what that is, you know you fold your sheets up and you get in there you can't you can't stretch your legs out, or you can get in the bed and be salt in there. That was, those are just a few that I can recall right off. I thought I was a pretty good cook. My specialty was uh, salmon croquettes and rice and green peas. The guys loved it. <laughs> and then on hot on Saturdays on hot dog day, I was good on hot dogs. The fire department since I've been there have uh, tradition was to have hot dogs on Saturday and it's still in existence as far as I know. In fact, I had uh, out at the station this past Saturday and had hot dogs with the guys. Do I see any advantages of the cubicles compared to the dormitory? I do. I see advantages to them um, for privacy and you want to get away, you can go to your cubicle and you don't have to be disturbed by anything. And I think it was a good thing that they did it. And when I was started out in a dormitory and I was there until I got promoted to captain, that's one uh, reason you want to get promoted so you have your own room. <laughs> uh, my, I think it would be a value of um, the firefighters that are currently on the line, they can see what we experienced and and uh, and they probably could get something from that. And your family, they can, once you're gone, they can look back and say, that my dad or my husband, you know. And that, that's the advantage I think of it is. Why is it important that the current firefighters take the time to talk to retirees. Um, I think they'll, it's out of respect and they could learn a lot from what happened in the past. It was, I, my first call on the department, back then they called it a smoke investigation. <laughs> and it turned out to be some food on the stove that was burning. That was my first call. We pulled out a little smoke and that was it. Do I remember my first fire? It was a house fire and and I had, um, I think it was Captain Nugent. And we went on this and the fire was in the kitchen and it had progressed to the carport. And, and these um, electrical wires was just popping up and down, jumping up and down. And then I said to myself, I said, what have I gotten myself into here? <laughs> and, uh, and my captain said, come on with me. And well, so we went on and knocked it out. Did we run medical call? Yes, we did. Uh, it wasn't like, like it is now, you know, where they automatically send you because we had the squads back then. but. <clears throat> They ran them, but I didn't run that many when we originally started. Do I see value in the fire department running medical call? Yes, I do, because uh, the fire department got more units than the EMS has, so I don't know the exact number, but I know <clears throat> we probably got three times as many stations they have stations, and so we are 80% of the time, I would say, we are the first ones on the scene, and we can give them medical help until EMS get there. Okay, how long did I serve in different areas? Um, I served 37 years, and I was initially on the line for 13 years, and then I went to fire prevention where I did inspections and fire investigations, and that was a a, learn, a good learning experience. And and after I was there approximately seven years, <clears throat> I returned back to the line, and uh, and then I enjoyed the rest of my 37 years. 
I don't remember any that I was actually on. I remember being, uh, when I was in the Bureau, uh, investigating one that with Old Davis Street fire. I wasn't on it, but I was on it as an investigator. It, what was that like? Um, it was challenging because we had to do a, a lot of, um, because it had burnt down the whole block almost, and I think we had a fatality in there, so we, we did a lot in that area. Um, when I first come on, like I re said earlier, you, you go to the station before you go in training, and they, you know, people had been fired before I went through, so I, would, I was diehard to uh, make sure I made it, and I got this, I went out at nine, and Captain, uh, well he wasn't a captain then, Randall Simpson. He was my driver and he just took me under his wing, so to speak, and and he had me ready for the training. He had me so ready, I was the, what he called it, the Crown Victoria of my class, so you know. Oh, the <laughs> top class? Yeah, yeah, top class. Well, that's good, uh, mm -hmm. good to know that. So and academically I, and all of you got the top rank in your class, is that correct? I was the, was a, yes, I was the top in my class. And um, yeah. when I first started, we had to wear, keep our dress uniforms all day long. White shirt, tie, all this around the station. And that was one change. And the other one, big change, was when we went from uh, 70, 72 hour shift to a 24 hour shift. I mean, 72 hour week to a 56 hour week. Um, that was the two biggest ones that I can think of right right off. Yeah. How did I cope with seeing death? Um, it wasn't real bad. The only part that bothered me was when uh, it was a kid. Uh, now, I hate to see a kid go out and see a kid's death, but all of them were bad, uh, but a kid, I could, I, I thought about that a few days before I could get over it. How did I cope with uh, the death of a fellow firefighter? It was bad. I, I remember I had just started when... Uh, Jesse Gray. Jesse Gray uh, was killed, and that's the only one that I remember that got killed in line of duty. Right. But I know it was a sad time, but you know, we had to regroup and continue on to saving property and lives. Did I ever work with female firefighters? I did. Tell us. Um, that was, uh, it was different, but I didn't see no major problem. We got along good and, and in fact I was one I was supervisor of one of them, and so we we had a good relationship, and I didn't see no problem. I would definitely do it over again, and I don't know if I would do too much any different than what I did. I had a, a good time, and and I enjoyed every the whole time. So you know, I wouldn't. I don't think I would do anything different. <laughs> Did any of my family play a, pay a part of my life? Absolutely. Uh, my wife was my number one recruiter. She was behind me every step of the way. And anything I wanted to do, especially in the fire department, she was behind me. If I went to a school, she said, yeah, you need to do that. You need to do this. And she was really my support. What would I consider a successful firefighter? Um, I think that, and you know, a lot of firefighters have different goals. My opinion is that if he wanted to just be a firefighter, in his mind, his problem was successful. And where I may might want to be a captain, if I get that, then if I don't try to go no further, then that means that I'm successful with what I am. So I think it's depending on the individual, 
what he wants to do and, and you know what he think is successful for him. My health has been good. What have how's my health been? It's been good. Thank the Lord. What advice would I give the rookies starting out? I would tell them first of all, keep your nose clean. Don't get into no hassle or trouble. And you make your bed hard, you can sleep in it, but you got to go out there and, and get your objectives, what you want to accomplish, and start working toward that, and I think you'll be fine. Do I have any hobbies I like to do? Yeah, I got a Harley Davidson I like to ride, <laughs> but here lately I don't get to ride it that much, and, uh, and since I retired, my hobbies have mostly been running gamp grandkids to basketball games and golf games and and uh, soccer and all this stuff so I enjoy that. How many grandkids I have? I have three. I have a 18 year old that's down at Carolina now. He's the second year down there and I have a granddaughter that just started high school and I got one that just started fifth grade. My message to my family would be that everything I did during my lifetime, they were number one and they was in my thoughts of what I was doing and and that I loved all of them. What would the fire department, I want the fire department to remember by Bryce Green. Uh, I think that they would, I would want them to remember that I was um, easy to get along with. I didn't uh, cause no problem. I did my job. And, and I was cordial. With I think you asked, uh, was there anything else I wanted to share? I think you asked me earlier about uh, when I was, uh, what, caused me to want to come on the fire department or be the on the fire department. I don't know if you asked that or not. But uh, it's a couple of things. You know, everybody used to look around and say, hey, you know, that fire truck going down the street, I love to ride that thing, you know. Not as much as that was I, I had a, a neighbor and uh, he was on the fire department and he said, man, why don't you come on? That was um, Lynn McLaughlin, I don't know if anybody remember him, but he was my neighbor and he used to talk and say, man, why don't you come on the fire department? I said, man, I'm too small for that. I was like 150, about 5'8". He said, no, we like small guys. We can put them through windows easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought about it and then I went and applied. <clears throat> but prior to that, when I was growing up, I lived in the country in Roxborough on a farm and we had mules in the stables and my brother and I was out there playing around and he had these old lanterns that were cold and we had it lit up out there in the, in the hay and he turned it over and, and it set the barn on fire and the mules was in there and he took off running to the house. And the mule just jumping up and down and hollering and wanted to get out and they couldn't get out and I went and got an axe. <clears throat> they wouldn't come out through where the fire was. And I got an axe and went around the back and knocked the, the back slabs loose so they could get out. And they went out and running and you could see the backs of them burning, the hair on the backs burning. Mm. And, and I got all squeezed up, my eyelashes and all this stuff. And then they used to tell me, you're going to be a firefighter one day. <laughs> so they gave me kudos for, you know, getting those muse, saving those muse alive. So that was your start of your career. Yeah, that was the start of my career. <laughs> That's a great story, yeah. Bryce. Well, uh, like I said, I, I hope we've covered everything. Uh, I don't know the time factor here that we got going here as far as the hour. But uh, I personally say I enjoyed Knowing you all these years and highly respect you and glad you came in and uh, shared with us your life and and uh, what's important to you. And, uh, I can't think of any other question, really. 
Well, good. You did good. As we say in the fire something, you did good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I hope he... Are you listening, Brian? I hope you are. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that bad.